My name is Tyler Nelson and I just graduated from California State University Long Beach with a degree in psychology. I was in the CSULB build program where I worked with Dr. Arturo Zavala. Um, starting this fall, I will be starting my PhD program in neuroscience at Yale University. I am wearing a black shirt with a heart-shaped necklace. I have long curly brown hair and brown eyes. I am a queer Latina Mexican American and I use she, her, hers pronouns. Yeah, so I grew up in Fullerton, California, and I was actually adopted. So I was adopted at a really young age. So I just remember growing up um, with my family in Fullerton. And um, my brother was actually uh, an in vitro baby as well. So they weren't, when they adopted me, they weren't expecting to have another child. And so my brother and I are only two months apart. So I kind of had a built-in best friend growing up. Um, I remember that in high school I would I took psych, AP psychology and I really enjoyed that class and I just remember from that point on I was like oh I'm gonna major in psychology when I go to college um, and then once I was in college I realized that psychology could mean so many different things and that neuroscience or behavioral neuroscience fell underneath that umbrella and so I think it's probably started in, in high school with AP psychology, but really like sprouted in to um, like science and research and the scientific community when I went to college. Well, I, I definitely never had like, I want to be a scientist when I grew up or, or anything like that. I thought that I was going to be a marriage family counselor um, and like do therapy and be a MFT. Um, and then once I took psychobiology, which is a, was a course requirement that I had to take in, um, in the psychology major, and I met Dr. Zavala, he was what really inspired me to be a scientist. He also is um, Mexican, and so we shared that identity right off the bat. And so just seeing like how inspiring he was and how um, important science was to him and his research, I was like, oh, like that could be me one day. Um, and so once getting into his lab, getting into the research lab and actually having like hands on experience as a researcher and scientist, I, that's when it like all clicked for me and I was like, oh, I'm going to be a scientist. Yeah, so I mean, just straight off the bat, like being able to have a mentored research experience is, I mean, a really great Thing to do if you are interested in going to a graduate program and I knew for me I wanted to go to a PhD program because I want to be a professor and a research professor one day so I knew that that involved a lot of research and so the build program um, you know I was already paired with Dr. Zavala but if I hadn't and you know expressed my research interest in addiction they would have put me with him um, and that was just an amazing experience it's very rigorous we have to spend at least 20 hours a week um, wait, we, at most 20 hours a week because we're not allowed to work more than 20, but at most 20 hours a week. But most of us did 20 hours a week because we were really dedicated to our research projects. And then in the summer, we had to work 40 hours a week, which is being a full-time researcher and scientist. So it really did, the BUILD program, like having those requirements, it really does push you to like be dedicated to your research and prepare you for what, how much research you're going to have to do in a graduate program. Um, and then you know, aside with the research too, we had to, um, you know, do a lot of, I guess, um, experiences where we were able to like meet with people that were in graduate programs, like past build students or people that are professors who are want to come meet with us and, and meet with us and share their research experiences. So that was always just really cool just to see like how there are people that look like us that are doing such amazing things in different sorts of scientific positions. So like people that work at the National Institutes of Health, people that work as research professors, people that work for, you know, different government or public health positions. So it was cool because even if you don't want to be maybe a professor, like you can still go get a PhD and do so many different things. Yes, so I was terrified to reach out to Dr. Zavala 
when I was a sophomore and I was like, oh, he's like going to say no. Like, I don't know how to do research. I've never done anything related to research or science. Like, why would he want me to be in his lab? Like, I don't like I'm just not going to email him. And my mom is the one who said, like, you're already sitting at a no by not emailing him. And I don't know why, like, that is, like, the biggest advice that I take to everything that I apply to and the opportunities that I seek out is, like, it's you're already sitting at a no by not doing anything. And if his class interested me and his research interested me, then I needed to reach out and see if that is an opportunity, you know, that I could take. So I emailed him, and he said yes. And so I always say, reach out if you're interested in science, if you're interested in a research topic, if you're still an undergrad, go to your professor's office hours, talk to them. Like, it doesn't have to be like, can I be in your lab? But just ask them about their research because you never know what might be interesting to you and what opportunities might come from that. Even if you're graduated, there are so many programs like post back programs or just volunteering in a lab. If you are willing to work for free and do research, I am sure someone is going to be able to help you, um, you know, get into science. So there's so many different opportunities and avenues, and but I think you have to be the one to really reach out and seek those opportunities. And people do want to help you. My name is Tyler Nelson, and this is my story.